We have new CNN reporting this morning on how President Biden is feeling about things. We are told he is embittered and angry at certain Democrats who pushed him out, but also relieved and not holding a grudge. With us now, CNN White House correspondent Arlette Sines. Arlette, embittered yet not holding a grudge. How can both things be true? Well, apparently they are, John. When President Biden is still feeling the sting out around the whole process that led him to drop out of the 2024 race. And he has made clear to those close to him that he was particularly unhappy with former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. In fact, the two leaders have yet to speak since Biden bowed out of the, the race. Now, this new reporting from our White House team really provides some insight into President Biden's headspace at this time. Uh, sources stopped short of using that word grudge, but they did say that Biden would not soon forget uh, those who had uh, pushed publicly and privately for him to exit the race. Now, uh, Biden, as you mentioned, has been alternating between being embittered and relieved about the decision to bow out of the 2024 race, with some saying that he is still processing this entire situation. Now, another source said that while Biden was unhappy in the moment, he hasn't spent time ruminating about the decision. But still this reporting does highlight some apparent tension between Biden and Pelosi, two Democratic leaders who became friends uh, early on in their political careers and rose in their own ways to lead the Democratic Party. Now, uh, Pelosi was actually asked about her current relationship with Biden in a recent interview with The New Yorker. Take a listen to that moment. Do you think you'll have your relationship will be there? I hope so. I pray so. I cry so. You know. You worry about I it? I lose sleep on it. Yeah. Yeah. You think but, he's angry at you? Hmm? You think he's angry at you? I don't know. We haven't no com haven't had a conversation. Now, a White House spokesperson pushed back on the idea that Biden is still unhappy with Pelosi, saying that that's not accurate and that the president's attention right now is on the future and at the past. But it is clear that there have been times when the president has been frustrated about those efforts from within his own party to push him out of the 2024 race. Embittered but frustrated, not unhappy or holding a grudge there. Interesting distinctions, to say the least, Arlette. Look, what does the president see as his role in the next 80 some days as part of the presidential campaign? Well, right now, for President Biden, one focus will be on burnishing his own legacy. He won't be bogged down by having to campaign day in and day out himself against former President Donald Trump. You've already seen him start to focus on some of those legacy pieces this week, traveling down to New Orleans to talk about cancer. But another key focus for Biden will be trying to help Vice President Kamala Harris be elected president uh, in November. The two will be appearing for the first time together on a stage today out in the country, traveling to Maryland to talk about lowering prescription drug prices. The expectation is Biden will hit the road in the coming days, uh, weeks and months in order to support Harris and also do everything he can from here in the White House to ensure she's elected in November. Got it. Well, in the spirit of the White House messaging and how the president sees things, thank you and no thank you for this reporting this morning. Our last size <laughs> at the White House. Appreciate your time. <laughs> Sarah. All right. Joining me now, CNN political commentator Maria Cardona and former White House spokesperson for George W. Bush, Pete Seat. Thank you both for being here this morning. Uh, let's talk about this, this new poll that's come out by Pew Research, finding that Harris's campaign is energizing the Democratic Party in a brand new way, 62% of Democratic voters strongly support Harris at the top of the ticket compared to last month, which is really no number. Just 43% of Democrats strongly supported Biden in that very same poll. So Pete, Trump, there's the poll there, has another news conference today, hoping to grab the spotlight from Harris as you see these numbers. If his presser is anything like the last one where he spewed a bunch of lies and he went after her personally, is the old adage still the same that all publicity is good publicity for him? <laughs> well, that's what I tell my clients. So let's stick with that, Sarah. All press is good <laughs> press. But I think what he has going for him is most Americans are living their lives and not watching his press conferences. Uh, every minute of his press conferences and hanging on every word that he says. But I join the chorus 
that says he needs to scrap the personal attacks and insults and focus on the issues that the American people care about. We see this in poll after poll. They want to boost the economy. They want to secure the border. They want to cool inflation. It's not that hard. The roadmap is there. He just needs to stay on the road and not drive right off the cliff. But it's interesting though, this is Vice President J.D. Uh, JD Vance is saying, no, it's stick with it. You've won this way before, you can do it again. Um, so divergent opinions there. Maria, I do wanna ask you about another poll, uh, and there have been many. Time and time again, Americans have said, look, they're unhappy with their own personal economies right now. Trump has the advantage generally in polling on that. Um, and Trump is tying Harris to Biden. How can Harris separate herself from Biden when the two of them are appearing together today? Look, I think what Vice President Harris is going to do and what she has already started to do is to focus on the economy in a way that is very relevant and very personal to all of those people that you just mentioned, Sarah, that aren't feeling the massive economic gains because on paper they are massive economic gains, but they're not feeling it perhaps in their own personal economies. She's going to be talking about lowering costs, which is the number one thing that people feel when they go to the grocery store, right? And I think if she continues to focus on that, if she continues to focus on the issues that voters feel on a day-to-day -day basis, I think that she will be able to bring home the fact that she and Tim Waltz are gonna be the ones that are gonna be fighting for them every single day. She's gonna be the one that's gonna be fighting to expand the middle class, to help working class voters, to be the one that is going to support them and their families versus Donald Trump, who is supporting Project 2025. And many economists have said that if his policies are implemented, inflation is going to skyrocket. And families, those same working class, middle class families, their economies are going to be in the toilet. So that is a contrast I think that she can work in her favor, especially as someone who is different on the ticket than Joe Biden was. And she can do it without uh, essentially trying to distance herself too much from President Biden. All right, Pete, I, I, and this is to both of you, really, but I'll start with Pete. Uh, CNN has some reporting that, that RFK Jr. reached out to the Harris campaign about a possible role in her administration if, caveat, he drops out and endorses her. And he made this similar pitch to Trump as well. Um, are you surprised there are no takers, Pete, so far? <laughs> the only reason we're talking about RFK Jr. is because his last name is Kennedy. If he was Robert F. Smith Jr., we wouldn't even be having this conversation. So best of luck to him. But I, I have to, to jump on something, you know, what Maria was talking about there. Kamala Harris cannot distance herself from Joe Biden. It is Biden, Harris, Biden, Harris, Biden, Harris. It's like saying Beetlejuice three times. It just conjures up bad things when you say that. So whatever economic policies Harris Walls puts out, that is an implicit admission of the failures of the Biden-Harris administration, plain and simple. So she will try a, a new font. She'll try a new color scheme to, to pretend like it's something fancy and new, but it's not. It's the same failed policies that the American people feel are not working for them. Maria, do well, you... let me now. Yes, let, let me jump in here because I think what Pete is not understanding, and what Republicans do not understand, is that the economic policies that the Biden Harris administration have put forward are massively popular. They poll off the charts. Ask voters what they think about $35 insulin. Ask voters what they think about capping. Uh, prescription drug costs at $2,000 per seniors uh, for seniors every year. Ask voters how they feel about expanding the Affordable Care Act. Ask voters what they how they feel about 
being able to send their kids to college and not having that burden because a lot of their kids have, are having their student loans forgiven. Ask voters how they feel about an administration who has focused on these policies that are massively popular, the infrastructure bill, the PACT Act. You ask voters about those things in, in uh, polls and in focus groups, they poll off the charts. And that was what was frustrating, frankly, from the Biden's perspective, because they were not connecting the two. Well, guess what? Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz can absolutely connect the two and take credit for it. And that contrast is going to win them the election in November. Maria Cardona, Pete Seat, we're going to leave it there. Thank you both. Appreciate it.